Okay, so we just finished going through all nine movies of the X-Men series. We did it by trilogy, so we started out with X-Men 1, 2, 3, then X-Men Origins, Wolverine, The Wolverine, Logan, First Class, Days of Future Past, and X-Men Apocalypse. We did it. We yeah. broke it down into trilogies instead of chronologically because it's a little more confusing that way. But like we did with the Fast and Furious series, we are going to break down what was our favorites and what was our least favorites. So Taylor, what was the yes. worst of the series for you? Uh, X3. X3. Why is X3 the worst? It's it's boring. Uh, the only thing I like about it is the Juggernaut. Yeah, the Juggernaut was a decent character. Um, um, I don't know. There's just... I don't... I, I didn't like the... I think we talked about it. Well, I know we did. But I just didn't like the character selection in that one. Yeah. Well, there was too the, many... Like, there it, were no interesting mutants. Yeah. Like, bad guys, at least. Yeah. Well, because all of them were bad guys. Yeah, well, pretty much. Yeah, they just... You, there was no one to like hold on to, and they had like that weird group of characters that surrounded Magneto. That uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, did, like were kind of emo ish. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they were real moody. Yeah. So, what is your worst movie then? My least favorite X Men movie is X Men Origins Wolverine. Really? That's the bottom, huh? Okay. That is the worst. I think the effects are terrible. I think the storyline is not hey. great. I think that the, you know, Wolverine's relationship with Sabretooth is weird. I think Leaf Shiver does a good job, but he's kind of the only good part of that whole thing. Everything, everything makes all the other stuff worse in that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, y- no, I agree. Yamel, Yamil says, how about the Sixth Sense? Six Sense is good. Um, I haven't oh, no, seen it for, for a long time, but every time I watch Bruce Willis now, I'm disappointed. I think he does not a good job. What was the last good Bruce Willis movie? Probably The Sixth Sense, but I again, I haven't seen it for a long time. <laughs> That's when he peaked. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the better ones. All right, number two. What is your second, or I guess number eight? What is the I'm going to say number eight would be the Wolverine. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't care for it. What, what don't you like about the Wolverine? That one in a way is almost more boring than X three. Okay. But I just don't, I don't know. It was just hard for me to follow to be honest. (laughs) It's just not smart. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Well, and, I, for, and I'm aware of that. <laughs> for me, I put uh, X3 as my second worst. Or my so we have worst. our... Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. And I agree with you, what you were saying. I think X3, uh, there's too many bad guys. None of them you can really grab onto. Felt like Ian McKellen, while he does a good job as Magneto, you've already seen it with X1. You've already seen it with X2. Didn't yep. really have a new motivation at all. Didn't feel... It just felt like he got beat up, lost, came back, got beat up, lost, came back, and is going to get beat up again. Didn't really feel um, threatening at all. And yeah. they wasted so many good storylines with the Phoenix, the Dark Phoenix. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Killing her, killing off Scott Summers, killing off Professor X. They just really <laughs> didn't do a very good job. Um the only reason why it wasn't the worst for me is because I felt like X-Men Origins was so, so far off what it should have been. So like the story wise, you know, w- with Hugh Jackman being the lead, like you were going to get so many answers and none of them felt satisfying. X3 yeah. is almost as bad, but I think it just barely does better than X-Men Origins. I got you. Okay. Um, so Yamil asks, what is your favorite movie in general? My favorite movie. Sandlot. You say Sandlot? I, oh, yeah. it, it depends on my mood. I don't have a yeah. number one all time. I generally will go with like something like fight club or saving private Ryan. Oh, uh, I love saving private Ryan. Yeah. It's really good. 
Um, That's so good. The Raid is also really good. That's I still haven't seen that one. You haven't seen The Raid? No. So, um, I need to. Nostalgia, I'll say like Terminator 2 or Rocky, but I don't have like a, a number one. I have kind of categories for how I feel emotionally for when I watch a movie. Yeah. But uh, all right, number seven, Taylor. What is your seventh um, favorite or seventh worst? Depends on how you want to look at it. Seventh would be uh, Origins. And okay. basically for the same reasons you said, it it had a lot of potential, didn't live up to it. The only reason it's this high on the list is because I still like that opening montage. I Again, that, that was another thing. It that, wasn't as good as I remember yeah. it being, but it's still, I like the concept. I like the idea of it. I want the whole movie to be that. I want to see Wolverine yeah, no, just fight in wars and lose and then fight in the next war. Like that would have been, I think pretty cool, but the, it just took a weird turn with all the rapey stuff with saber tooth and yep. I don't know. Faking the death and all that stupidness. Yeah. Uh, number okay. s- seven for me is X two. Oh, Okay. This is my seventh. So not necessarily quality wise, but enjoyable. What this is the seventh movie that I would want to watch again. Like, so if I was going to pick, what am I, what's the, what am I most looking forward to rewatching? This is seventh on my list after uh, origins and the last stand and X two mostly because it felt so similar to X-Men one. It 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 did everything X Men one better, but just barely. And with X Men one being more of an origin story, I find that more interesting. So I I give yeah, X Men one new. the nod over that. I do like the Nightcrawler scene. I do think that is better. But at the one at the White House, yeah, it's not really yeah. enough to outdo X Men one. Okay, I see. Number six. Uh, that's where I have X2. Okay. Um, I, I I find this one a little bit boring, but I think, like I've said in the past, for some reason, I really enjoy Stryker as a villain. Uh-huh. This is kind of when you get like your first glimpse of him and and what his motivations are, and I I, I just I I really like. I, I think he's cool. Like I think he's he's good for a non mutant. You know, he's he's still. I don't know if I'm, menacing is not the word, but he's still like, he's still a, a, a big threat to the X-Men. Yeah. My only problem with Stryker is he's never the actual villain. He is. Oh, always, he's always a secondary villain. Yeah. He's always like the B plot. The, the B he, story. Yeah. He comes in just to make things a little bit more complicated to kind of get yeah. in the way, but he's never really the main villain. And I would say he is the next two. You wouldn't say so. I don't think, you think so. He's not as much as Magneto, I guess. I think Magneto is the ultimate villain. I think they kind of, while he's not so much like a red herring, he isn't really the issue. Wouldn't you call him the ultimate villain of origins? Um, but the, it's not, he's never the one to really be overcome. Do you know what I mean? Like I know maybe, maybe origins, he he would be the biggest villain in that, uh, but next to Sabretooth. Yeah, next to Sabretooth, next to um, Deadpool. Deadpool, whatever. But it, he's it's just such a bad movie, <laughs> you know. Like yeah, it's it really it's is. so poorly constructed. Um, but it, with X two, I I don't think I would compare him to being the ultimate bad guy in that because he just I don't know. It, it, He's outshined, you know, and he's he's outmaneuvered. Yeah, he and while he does make things complicated, his motivations are are not that strong or not that compelling to where you're like concerned about him. He's easy to forget. And I, I don't think I think the character should be stronger than that. I think he deserves more. He is more menacing than that. But it's just I don't know. Doesn't work out that way. Yeah. Uh, Emil asked, do you like Taken 1, 2, or 3? I assume he's asking which one we like the best. I think the first one is the best. I think the third one is the worst. Um, The first one is really good. Liam Neeson does a good job in it. 
and then they just yeah. try to do that over and over again it, that's yeah it's they just they're like oh wow this worked let's just copy that it's uh, like if they made an entire movie out of the quicksilver scene yeah um do we do your number six already taylor yeah so that was my number six was x2, x2. so mine is x-men one it okay. uh x-men one we're uh, pretty close here we're, we're not far off yeah i the only difference here is you haven't listed wo- the the wolverine yet. The wolverine yet yeah uh x-men one is is good it's a good entry it's just very slow the action and a lot of it has to do with when they made it right 2000 yeah um and they just didn't have it together quite the right way to really pull off this story um, but the action felt slow it felt weak didn't feel like there's a lot of impact the wire work looked weird the characters were goofy saber tooth looked terrible oh i hated saber tooth um they just didn't have the tone figured out yet they didn't know what they wanted to do they didn't know how aggressive wolverine would could be and still be likable and so it was just like just it, yeah a little all over the place um mm. it's not the worst but it, it's it's just kind of in the middle you know number six i think is a good place for x-men one yeah i see uh number five what's your number so five? my number five is x1 okay um the, the thing it's got going for it is it, it was it's it's like new it was like the first of it was like the beginning of all this yeah stuff and it was just so interesting I, I, I agree going back and watching it. Yeah. The action feels slow, but like, I'm not going to count that against it because it's not like it was made recently. If it wasn't, yeah. that's what we got. Then it would be a disappointment before the time. Mm. I think it was, it was adequate. So that's how I'm going to judge it was how good it was when it came out yeah. and, and not it's, it's lasting ability because it, it really doesn't have it. Yeah. It doesn't hold up at all now. But it, I, I agree with you. At the time, it didn't. I don't remember it standing out as bad. And just now, it's like, wow, this looks not good. Yeah, exactly. So that's my number five. My number five is the Wolverine, the second in the Wolverine trilogy. Yeah, um, I, I see that. The reason why I put it over the original trilogy, in I think you put yours at the bottom. Mine's I, number eight. I enjoy the concept. While I don't think they nailed it, I, I think they got goofy and it just kind of fell apart after a while. The concept of him losing his power is so interesting to see him struggle and figure that out. I don't think they, yeah. they didn't quite take it to the extreme that I would have liked them to. I don't think he struggled with it enough. Um, but him doing that or them doing that, I think was interesting enough for it to be more enjoyable than the original trilogy was the only thing that i actually really like about the one is just that we get to see wolverine like get to be able to survive you know them dropping the bomb on nagasaki yeah i i I, I like that idea i think that was kind of one of the low parts for me i thought yeah i remember you not liking that but i like when he gets shot with the the gun when he like gets hurt here and there like it wasn't consistent with everything else, right? Like he should have been affected by all that stuff way more when he could heal. But yeah, you know, like to see him be weakened, I thought was really cool. I agree. I'm pretty sure we're both going to have identical top four. Right, we'll we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Spoilers. So, the, so Wolverine's your five. Number so five. my four is Apocalypse. All right. Why is that? Uh, because it's better than all the ones we just talked about, but not <laughs> as good as the ones we're going to talk about. <laughs> all right. It's, you- it's more exciting. It's, it's, it's fresher. Yeah. Um, outside of the, like we said, the uh, Apocalypse character not being all that great. Yeah. You know, all, there were some good characters in it, and it, ma- it made it enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, Wait, actually, uh, real quick, I wanted to bring up, and I forgot. What did you think about Havoc dying and being the reason, like he almost killed five hundred students? Uh, he was the reason that he almost killed them. 
He was he, yeah. So, he caused that explosion. He was and had Quicksilver not been there, they'd all be dead. Yeah, he was destroying uh, Cerebro. He was going after. Well, no. So he was. They had grabbed Professor X. So and he was going after him, and then he blasted, but they like disappeared, and he hit something and caused the explosion. So Professor X was in Cerebro, and Apocalypse had hacked into his mind and was controlling all the nukes through Cerebro, through Professor X. Right. And Professor X told him to wreck havoc, which I hate that right. line. I think that's so stupid. Um, <laughs> to destroy Cerebro, to stop a Apocalypse. And yeah. while doing that, he causes no, the it explosion. Wasn't, but it wasn't while doing that. He destroyed it, and they got Professor X out. Uh-huh. And then Apocalypse shows up, and they take Professor X oh, with Magneto right. and all yeah. them. And he goes to try to stop them, and they portal out of there, and he blows something. I don't know what it was. He yeah. hit something with his beam, and that's what caused the explosion. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I didn't mind. I didn't mind him dying. I think the explosion should have happened when he was already, you know, doing it, not after they came and snatched yeah. him away. You know what I'm saying? Like they already had a justification for him doing that. That was good. Make his good action turn into something bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like why? I, it's a weird thing about movies that we, people don't want to accept or director filmmakers don't want to do, but it's okay. Good things have bad consequences. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's no, that doesn't that make way more sense you know what i mean like yeah. for him to for them to be so desperate that they're trying to stop apocalypse that he starts shooting and destroying everything that in trying to save everyone they almost kill everyone mm-hmm. that seems way more compelling to me yeah no i agree but i my number four is also apocalypse uh, the reason why I think conceptually it is on par with the original trilogies. I think they don't do anything that much more interesting um, with the story, the themes and all that. It's about the same. It's just better at everything. Um, yeah. You know, the effects, the fighting, the, you know, the soundtrack, the acting, the dialogue, all that stuff is stepped up it's all better than the original trilogy um it doesn't do the stuff it does bad it does it as bad as the original trilogy does stuff that it does good it just does it better so that's why i put it number four i got you number three my number three would be uh first class yeah um first class is great because it's like say it goes back to that fresh idea where we get we get a little more origin. We get to send, you know, we get to see Xavier and and Magneto and their relationship, yeah. uh, and his kind of descent into becoming the Magneto that we know as an old man. Yeah. Um, and then we get we kind of get a handful of X Men, you know, mutants that we've never seen before. So, I I just I I like it. I don't know how. Yep. So it just is enjoyable. It's very rewatchable. My number three is also first class, mm-hmm. and I'm I agree with you. Other than the new mutants part, because that's kind of what brings it down for me in quality, is that the new mutants are not as interesting. They feel kind of out of place, and maybe because I'm not that big into the comics, I just don't know. Maybe if I read the comics, I would be excited. Like, oh, wow, they're finally using Azazel and they're finally using whatever January Jones character was. And they're finally, you know what I, I mean? The bad guys were the best part about this movie. Yeah, those were just the first names that I could think of. All of those mutants, all the the uh, X-Men mutants and the bad guys, all the new ones. Um, they just kind of felt like they were interesting, but not as good as showing the origin of the original you know like with um even in apocalypse having you know cyclops show up and showing gene gray i find that more interesting than what they did with first class just first class conceptually is way better yeah um 
Let's see, Yamil asked, do you like or hate Adam Sandler? I really don't like uh, Adam Sandler. I dislike him a lot these days. There's not anything he does that I've enjoyed for a very long time. He hasn't been funny since 51st Dates, and I stand by that. 50 First Dates is one of his better ones because there's a lot of heart That's, to it. There's not a lot of good stuff after that. That's like his last good movie. Well, I would argue that Adam Sandler back in the day is not very good either. He does. That's this. true. He, he was funnier when we were kids. And now, like Billy Madison, I used to think was like the greatest movie. And now it sucks. Yeah. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of jokes. He just acts goofy. Grown Ups is a terrible movie, you know. I hate that I, movie. I don't mind Grown Ups. I, I, grown Ups oh, was, was bad, but. Um, but number two, I'm guessing your number two uh, X Men movie is, is also. I'm circling back to X3. <laughs> Days of Future Past. That's correct. Uh, I love this movie. I think. I know. It's so good. They, they take what they did really well in first class and continue it. <laughs> They take Professor X and uh, Magneto and make their uh, relationship deeper. They bring in yep. Wolverine. They bring in Hugh Jackman, who plays against them all so well. I think the action in the dystopian universe time is mm -hmm. like, that's legit scary. You know, like that's yeah. oh, like that's terrifying. You are unsure what's going to happen. You don't know, you know, how they're going to escape and you feel stressed for the characters even yep. when you know they're going to go back in time. You know what I mean? Like they establish, oh, we just, we go back in time a week and we warn ourselves and we avoid it. When it comes to the time where they're getting attacked again, they don't have that escape card, escape card anymore. And it's like yeah. the stakes just feel so high that it's just, it's really good. I just love time travel in general. I hate time travel, but everything I else love I love. It. Uh, Yamil says what? I'm assuming because I said Grown Ups is terrible. That's what I mean. <laughs> I don't think any of those guys are that funny. I think Chris Rock is a good stand-up, but I don't think he's a good actor. Uh, Adam Sandler I agree with that. is not funny. He's a creepy guy who always has a super hot wife that doesn't make any sense because it just seems like it's ego f inflating. Uh, David yeah. Spade is not that funny I, either i actually I, I really like david spade um um there's one line from grown-ups that i do really enjoy yeah. and that's probably it so the whole movie you know it's based around that whole going back to the hometown and there's like the i don't know if you want to call them the bullies but the team that they face off as yeah. with as kids uh -huh. when they're like third grade or whatever it was and he uh he, he goes back and that they're at that pizza place and the dude's working he's like <laughs> He's like, he's like, hey, I see you. I see you put on a few pounds. He's like, since third grade, yeah, I put on a few pounds. <laughs> uh, um, who else is that? Rob Schneider, right? Rob Schneider, Steve Buscemi. Yeah, Steve Buscemi um, is a really good actor. Kevin James, but that's the bad one. Every he's, time he's with Adam Sandler, I don't like him. Oh, Steve Buscemi outside of Adam Sandler is good. Yeah. Have you watched Boardwalk Empire? Have we ever talked about that? Uh, no. Oh man, that is such a good show. Is it? Start to finish, amazing. Compared to Breaking and Bad. He, well, it's not. I mean, it's not as good as Breaking Bad, but it's it's super entertaining, and it's you 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 really forget like how weird Steve Buscemi can be. Yeah, because he's so good in this. Like, he just seems like a normal good actor. You know, you yeah. don't like. No, he's thinking really he's good roles. He's great, and uh, he's really good. he's the best. He's the best thing about this series, but it's it's just really good. Yeah, he you he gets kind of typecast because he looks weird. Yeah, uh, he's got the crazy eyes. Yeah, but he he's like a fantastic. But they downplay actor. it, you know, to where it's it's it doesn't stand out. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like he's a much better actor than he gets cast for because he looks weird, and they're like, oh, you would be perfect in this creepy role, but. He's he's so good. Yeah. Uh bench warmers. I also no, really don't like bench warmers. I don't like Nick Swartzen. I used to really like it. And uh, then I don't care for it. John Heater, I don't think is funny. I think he did good in Napoleon Dynamite. Um, that's it. David Spade. Who so who it was Rob Schneider, David Rob Spade, Schneider. and 
Bill Heater, right? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, David Spade. What's that? The guy from Napoleon Dynamite? Is that his name? I think so. John, no, John Heater. John Heater, sorry. Um, the David Spade is the best, but David Spade is always the same character. Yeah. In every movie. I, mean, I don't actually mind Rob Schneider in this movie. This is his least annoying role. Because he plays a, a really normal guy, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Um, I don't typically care for him, especially when he is like the star, but this one is fine. Yeah. Well, when he, yeah, when he's the, when he has to be the goofy, crazy guy, like mm-hmm. with, uh, what is that movie? Like when he tries to be Adam Sandler? Yeah. Or what's the, is it Hot Girl? Ugh, hot Chick. Hot Chick. Is it Hot Chick? Yeah. I don't remember. That's, it's awful. And it's when awful. It, it's the same like with Adam Sandler when they're when the joke is we're gonna make a funny sound or make a funny face, it is so the bad. Animal. What's up? The animal. It's like yeah. the animal. Yeah. The animal that I did, it's just so awful. But um, um anyways, number one, your top favorite X Men movie. Yes. Logan. Logan. Logan's the best. Yep. It's it's just it's, it's so good. It's so good all around. It's it, so good. It is like the Dark Knight to me. It is not so much a superhero movie, but it mm-hmm. is a a movie that kind of exceeds that. It kind of transcends the genre. It is, yeah. You know, it's a it's a a movie at its heart, or the the movie at its heart is about a son now becoming a father, right? Like. He he was lost and his dad, Professor X, obviously not his actual dad or anything like that, but his father figure, you know, he's losing him, but also becoming like taking his place almost. And yeah. it's it's so the that theme is so strong and so consistent throughout the movie that it, it's just uh, it's just so just so good. And the uh the 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 wrap up of logan you know the send off and just oh man it is just so well done i don't even know i like i just feel dumb trying to talk about it because it's it's just good it does everything well the writing is good the the action the violence is good talking about it you almost come we come off as like i don't know super fanboys yeah like because it's just it is that good yeah I wouldn't talk about any of the other ones like I would talk about Logan. No, no, definitely not. It's it's like X Days of Future Past is number two. Logan is so it's, far it's above like that. Ten to me. times better than that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's because it's not really a comic book movie. It's just right. a good movie. It's not one. It's, of my, it's the classic story being on the road. You know, you got the adult and you got the child being on the road, learning mm-hmm. life lessons, getting to that final destination, like like the road or road to produce, you know, st- movies like everything, that. Where- everything that has road in the title. Yeah, road exactly. Warrior. Roadhouse. Maybe Roadhouse. <laughs> uh, Yamil wants to know, do we watch or like The Office? It's his favorite show. I love The Office. The Office is I've really good. watched it 10,000 times probably. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it that many times, but I have watched it through twice. Oh, that's it? <laughs> yeah. I watched it through twice like last week. <laughs> it uh it doesn't hold up for me as well as I, I did the first time through when I was watching it week oh, to really? week. Yeah. The characters oh, I I like I I like it better now than the yeah. first time I watched it. Watching it week to week I think is preferred. Uh watching there's, it. There's back something to about back. knowing there's so many good things like something about knowing that a, a funny scene is coming up. So you like stop what you're doing and watch it. I, yeah. I know. I, I find that enjoyable. I, the, so the character, there's not a lot of character growth. Um, they all kind of stay consistent throughout and watching it back to back. It's a lot more apparent. Well, my counter one counterpoint to that would be one of my favorite character arcs from start to finish is Ryan. 
Because it's, I, I wouldn't call it growth. I don't know. You can call it whatever it's, the yeah, opposite it's not, of that is. It's not growth. It's not, well, it doesn't, he, you don't. How he goes from this up and comer in business school to being the worst person. But you don't. Like he just. He, Ryan is a new character from season to season. You don't watch him grow and develop. You watch him be one character. And then in the next season, he's a new character. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's. You you don't see him learn or change or change because of something. It's oh you know what'd be funny? He was really smart. Now let's make him a drug addict. Oh you know what'd be funny? He was their boss. Now let's make him his, their underling again. You know what I mean? Like it's not a, a it's not a growth or a change. It's just like oh let's just let's just do something different with him. We can use this character yeah. any way we want. Let's just change it. And which is fine. It's funny, but it's not. It's there's not it's not a growth thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he's he's consistently inconsistent. I guess I don't know. I love it. But like, I, I feel like du- the office, like ruined him. Dwight uh, is the most has the most growth from beginning to end of the series. Oh no, for sure. He, uh, you know, like you can see it, and you can see why it happens and how it happens and how he becomes who he is at the end where he actually cares about them and like, you know, has, has changed. Everyone else is much more the same from beginning to end. Yeah. There's uh, one funny thing that actually I stumbled upon it today. Not that I found it, but somebody pointed it out. So there's the episode where Pam makes everyone do the new year's re- resolutions. Uh-huh. There's if you pause it, like at a certain spot, you can see her board <laughs> and Stanley it says to be a better husband and boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's so funny. He's just out there with it. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, uh, but yeah, so back to Logan, I think Logan, like we were, like I was saying earlier, it reminds me a lot of the dark Knight. The dark Knight is not really a DC movie. It is much more of a Nolan film. And yeah. Um, with Logan, this is, you know, clearly Hugh Jackman's vehicle. This is you know, like his thing. Him and Patrick Stewart are a great pair. I enjoyed not having Magneto in it. You know, like not having him be the bad guy was kind of refreshing. Having mm-hmm. X-22 or the whatever, Laura, the girl. I want to say she's 23. Maybe she's 23, but I feel like X-24 doesn't sound right for the, the clone. I think it's 22, 23, not 23, 24. But uh, she she is phenomenal. She's a great actress, and she the violence that her character has is mm-hmm. so visceral and like just you like you feel it when it happens. It's just I don't know, man. It, it's really good. So My it's the clone is the X twenty four. Okay, so it's twenty three twenty four. Yeah. Um. I, there's there's some things that I don't like about it, like X twenty four. I think. It was unnecessary, but just even the moment where he kills uh, Patrick Stewart and, you know, Logan shows up, yeah. it's like, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me like that. That moment is, you know, so powerful too, but yeah, I'm, I'm done talking about X-Men. We're done. Good. Yeah, there's a good chance. I don't ever watch any of these movies again uh, outside of probably Logan in the future. Yeah. I cannot see, cannot see doing it. These aren't even ones I want to show my kids. Like there's certain like I want to watch you know a lot of the superhero movies with I them at some will. point, but I'm not like excited to show them these. Yeah, you know, like Logan is the best, and then Days of Future Past. We're just ruining everything for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But uh, yeah, so we let me know. Let us know what your ranking is. Which ones yeah. do you think are best? What? How we were wrong. How Taylor was the most wrong, even though we almost nope, agreed. Incorrect. <laughs> um, but we will be back uh, next week with. Uh, we still haven't talked about it. What I'm thinking is <laughs> Alien. It's a surprise. Starting the Alien franchise. Okay. So I haven't seen those. Me either. So I think that would be a fun one to do. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we'll be back on Wednesday with Alien, the first Alien movie. Or not Wednesday, Sunday. Back on Sunday. Whenever we're back, we will be back with that. You'll see it when you see it.